The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, Camtel, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Z, John Stan, your mathematics teacher. Before we go into the lesson proper, let's begin by correcting the assignment we had in the last lesson. Question one. We had one question, by the way. Using the figure below, calculate the magnitudes of vectors u and v. And the second part of the question is for us to calculate the direction of vectors u and v. We can see the figure and we see geometrical representation of vector u and vector v. For us to calculate the magnitude, which means the length of the two vectors, we have to know their expression, their algebraic expression for those two vectors. So to do that, what we will do is, let's start with vector u. Because the tail of vector u is at the origin, it means that vector u is a position vector. So if we just get the coordinates of the point where the head is found, that is enough for us to write the algebraic expression of that vector. Or on the other hand, we can say, to get from the tail to the head, we move five units in the negative direction of the x-axis and then three units in the y direction and then we'll arrive at the, tail, at the head. So if we do that, vector u will have uh, as its expression negative 5i plus 3j. While for vector v, observe that vector v starts at this point 1, 1. If we move, if we want to move from where the tail is up to the head, we move four units in the positive direction of the x-axis and then two units along the positive y-axis and that gives us 4i plus 2j so that those are the vectors then the magnitude of vector u will be the square root of negative 5 squared plus 3 squared and that will give us square root of uh, four, 34 units to calculate now the magnitude of vector v, it will be the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. And that gives us the square root of 20, which is, can be simplified to have 2 root 5 units. Let's get now the directions. For the first vector, the direction of vector u, we said vector u is negative 5i plus 3j and we know that to calculate the direction of a vector we do tan inverse we say tan theta is equal to 3 divided by negative 5 so theta which is the direction will be tan inverse of 3 all over negative 5 if we do this it will give us negative 31 degrees when we take it to the nearest degree. But that angle looks a type. Negative 31 degree. What does that mean? Let me explain something. 
So we've obtained it as negative 31 degrees. And this is the idea. When we have our Cartesian plane, that vector u, we already saw that it was in this region. It is found here. This is where vector u is found in the second quadrant. Now, when you have an angle that has a negative sign, a negative angle means that it has been measured in the clockwise direction and in the clockwise sense. Meanwhile, Positive angles are measured in the anti-clockwise direction. So this negative 31 degrees means that we are measuring it still with the x-axis, but we are measuring from here, going in this direction. So it is 31 degrees, but in the opposite direction to the usual way. But we defined the direction of a vector as the angle that vector makes with the positive x-axis. So the angle we are actually looking for is this angle here. This is where we want our theta to be. So to get the correct theta, all of this angle from here right to here is 180 degrees. So to obtain this angle, it will be 180 minus 31 degrees. And that will give us 100... Um, that's 149 instead of 50 because we have the 31 not 30 so here should be 31 so we have to do that that's 180 minus 31 degrees or negative 31 plus 180 degrees so always take note of the region in which the vector itself is found the second vector is vector v is equal to 4i plus 2j. So to find its own direction, we just find uh, tan inverse of 2 all over 4, or tan inverse of 0 0.5. And that gives us 22, 26.6 degrees. Okay, we finished with the correction of the assignment. Now, let's situate ourselves in uh, the program how where we are now again we've been looking at plane geometry and so far we are dealing with vectors in two dimensions after that we'll look at simple transformations loci and geometrical construction in other vectors in two dimensions so far we have done definition and representation of vectors we've done various operations on vectors Lastly, we did angle, or presently we will be doing angle between two vectors. And after that, we'll look at vector geometry and end with midpoint theorem and proportional division of vectors. So lesson 19 is the angle between two vectors. In this lesson, we will have, we'll follow this plan. We'll start with the objective of the lesson, we'll get to prerequisite, real life situation, learning activity, application exercise, and then we'll wrap up the lesson with an assignment. Let's get started by looking at the objective of the lesson. This lesson is, has a, a lone objective that by the end of the lesson, uh, the learner should be able to calculate the angle between any two given vectors. Now before you do this lesson, there are some concepts, or there is a concept that you should be comfortable with, and you should, as a learner, be capable of calculating the magnitude of a given vector. So to verify whether we are still comfortable with that, uh, let's calculate the magnitude of vector OB, where vector OB is equal to negative i plus 2j. We remember that, or we can recall that, to calculate the magnitude of a vector, we find the square root of the sum of the squares of the coefficients of i and j respectively. 
So the coefficient of i in this vector, as we can see, is negative 1. The coefficient of j is 2. So the magnitude will be square root of negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. And that gives us the square root of 5 units. Now, let's look at this real-life situation. We have an aeroplane that is in flight and is on a path defined by a vector 5i minus 3j. While wind is blowing in a direction given by a vector 2i plus um, 7j. How can the angle between the path followed by the wind and the plane be found? The plane has a path that it is following and the wind also has a path it is following. So how can we calculate the angle between the two paths followed by the wind and the plane? Now you can reflect on this a problem and figure out whether you can have a way of calculating or how it can be obtained. But even if you can't get it along the line within the lesson, you will be able to uh, understand how we can do that and we will actually revisit this real life situation. Okay, let's look at this learning activity. Consider the vector diagram below. We have a Cartesian plane and somewhere here we have a vector u which makes an angle theta with the horizontal, that is with the positive x-axis. And then we have a vector v which lies exactly on the uh, x-axis, but starts from the origin and ends at the point where we have 5 on the positive x-axis. Good. Now, the first task is for us to state the expression for the vectors vector u and vector v. Next, we will calculate u dot v. It's something we've not seen before. So u dot v means you take a times b plus b times q, where vector u is ai plus bj and vector of v is equal to pi plus qj. This is vector v. Now, so when we are calculating uv, u dot v, it means we take the coefficient of i in vector u and we multiply with the coefficient of i in vector v. And then we do the same with the coefficient of j in the two vectors. And we put here. Next, the angle between vector uh, u and vector v is given as theta. Is the same as the direction of vector u find theta. Then next we will calculate uh, the magnitude of vector u times the magnitude of vector v cosine theta. So when we calculate magnitude of vector u, we multiply it by the magnitude of vector v and then multiply it by the cosine of the direction of vector u, which we've already obtained. Next we will compare the results in task 2 and task 4 and then make a conclusion. So let's get the solutions of this learning activity. Now, look at the diagram. State the expression for vector, vectors u and vectors v. Vector u is a position vector. Its tail is at the origin. And to get from, to live from the tail to the head, we move three units on the positive x-axis and then move three units to the positive in the positive y direction. Or we just get to the, the, the head of that vector. You see it is at the point 3, 3, which means that vector u can be written as 3i plus 3j, while vector v lives from the origin, is also a position vector, from the origin up to the point where we have uh, 5. So it is only in one in the direction of the x-axis. The y component is 0 and it is 5i. So vector v is equal to 5i. Now, using this vector u and vector v, let me write it out and 
and indicate something. So vector u is equal to 3i plus 3j, while vector v is equal to 5i, which can also be written as plus 0j, because the head of vector v was at the point 5, 0. So now we are expected to calculate the dot product. So this kind of multiplication is called dot product. It's done only with vectors. Now, vector u dot vector v is calculated as taking the x, the coefficient of i in vector u, times the coefficient of v, the coefficient of i in vector v. So we take a times p. Now, when we look at our vectors, this is the coefficient of i here is 3. So vector u dot vector v will be equal to 3 times 5. 3 times 5 plus 3 times 0. Now, observe too here that I want to, you to discover this. Observe that when we are doing the multiplication, i and j do not come there again. We just concentrate on their coefficients. So if we simplify this, it will give us 15 plus 0. So the final answer is 15. So u dot v is equal to 15. One thing we can notice or observe here is that when we do the dot product of two vectors, the result is a scalar, it's a number. Good. Let's move on. Now, using those two vectors, we are asked to calculate the angle between vector u and vector v. And that angle between vector u and vector v is indicated on our diagram as theta. And it happens to also be the vector or the direction of vector u. Why is it the direction of vector u? Because that angle theta happens to be the angle between the x-axis and vector u. So we want to find theta. So to find theta, we simply find the direction of vector, vector u. And so that will give us theta as tan inverse of 3 all over 3. In other words, if we want to find the direction of vector u, we say tan theta is equal to 3 divided by 3. So theta is equal to tan inverse of, of 1, which gives us, I think, 45 degrees. Correct. So theta, or the angle between uh, u and v, vector u and v, is uh, 45 degrees. Okay. Now we want to do something. We want to take the magnitudes of vector u, multiply it with the magnitude of vector v, and multiply it by the cosine of theta. And we've just calculated theta to be 45 degrees. So to do that, we say magnitude of vector u is the same as the square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared times the magnitude of vector v, which is the square root of 5 squared times cos theta, which is cos Theta is 45 degrees. If we simplify this, we will have square root of 18. We simplify this, we have square root of 25, cosine 45. Now, square root of this is the same as, you know, 18 is also the same as 9 times um, 2. And square root of, so we will have something like square root of 18. Square root of 18 is the same as square root of 9 times 2, which is equal to square root of 9 times square root of 2. And that gives us 3 root 2. And then square root of 25 is 5. So we have 5 here. And then times square root, I mean cosine 45 is 1 over root 2. If we simplify this, root 2 will cancel root 2. And then we will end up with 3 times 5, which is 15. So now the next question is for us to compare the results in uh, task 2 and uh, when we did it in task 4.
We discovered that both answers were 15. We, we calculated u dot vector u dot vector v and the answer was 15. We've just calculated the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v times cosine theta and it has also given us 15. So what can we conclude? We can conclude that u dot v is equal to mach u magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. So this is the formula we can use whenever we want to calculate the angle between two vectors. So what can we retain from this lesson? The fact is that the angle between any two vectors is the shortest angle at which any of the two vectors, if rotated about the other vector, the both, the both vectors will point or will have the same direction. And when we want to calculate dot product, the dot product is u dot v is equal to the magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors u and v. There are some important uh, properties of or properties of dot products. The first one is that dot product of two vectors is commutative. So a dot b is the same as b dot a, and both is equal to a b cos theta, where a is the magnitude of vector a and b is the magnitude of vector b. Observe that the a b here they are not bold, since vectors are bold uh, uh, letters. Now, if we do the dot product and the answer is zero, it means that those two vectors are perpendicular. Remember that we've just said two vectors, their dot product is equal to, on the right, we have cos theta. So if they are perpendicular, it means that the angle between them is 90 and cosine 90 is zero. So the right hand side becomes zero. Now, if we do the dot product and the answer is the same as the magnitude of vector A times magnitude of vector B, it means those two vectors are parallel. Because two vectors are parallel if the angle between them is zero. And cosine zero is one. So, if we take I and I, if we dot it, the answer will be the same as J dot J, which is the same as K dot K, which is equal to magnitude of each of them multiplied together and i, j, and k are unit vectors. So their answers, will, their product, their dots product will be one. Okay, let's look at this application exercise. It will help to concretize what we have just, we have just gone through. The first is for us to find the dots product of the two vectors, 3i minus 2j or dots 2i plus 4j. So we have 3i minus 2j dot 2i plus 4j. When we do this dot product, we concentrate only on when we take those for the coefficient of i, we multiply with the coefficients of i. So we have 3 times 2 plus we take negative 2 times 4. And that is all. So we have 6 minus 8 gives us negative 2. So that's their dot product. Find the angle between those two vectors. To find their angles, we now need to use this formula. That's their dot product is the same as their magnitude, the product of their magnitude cosine theta. So the adult product we've already obtained is as negative 2. It should be equal to the magnitude of this vector, which is square root of 3 squared, which is 9, plus negative 2 squared, which is 4, times square root of 2 squared, which is 4, plus 4 squared, which is 16. All of it cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the two vectors. So we are saying negative 2 is equal to square root of 13 times square root of 20 cosine theta. So cosine theta is equal to negative 2 divided by square root of um, 260 or something like that. And then we find angle theta from there. 
So let's see what it will give us. So if we do that, okay, yeah, instead of having instead of having negative three here, it should have been negative two. So we should be having the cosine inverse of negative two all over square root of two hundred and sixty. That's what will give us the angle theta. Okay, find the angle between the uh, two vectors, u and v, where u is equal to 2i plus 3j, and v is equal to 3i minus 2j. Now, to find the angle, we use the formulas we've just done for this other question. That's u dot v is equal to magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta. So let's find u dot v. u dot v is equal to the vector 2i plus 3j dot 3i minus 2j. If we do the adult product this times this, that's 2 times 3 gives us 6. Then 3 times negative 2 gives us negative 6. And the final answer will be 0, which means vector u dot vector v is equal to 0. Now, we don't even need to go into that formula u dot v is equal to magnitude of u, magnitude of v, cosine theta, to get theta from there. We already came across the fact that when this is zero, it means that those two vectors are perpendicular. So it means the angle between them is 90 degrees. And the argument was the fact that if this is equal to zero, it means this portion is zero. So if magnitude of u times magnitude of v cosine theta is equal to zero, if we divide both sides by this magnitude, it means cosine theta will be equal to zero. Because when we divide both sides by this, the right hand side will still be zero. And theta will be equal to cosine inverse of zero, which is 90 degrees. So when once you remember that property, when you reach here, you can just conclude that those two vectors are perpendicular, meaning that the angle between them is 90 degrees. Let's look at the next question. That's question three. Given that the vectors a equal to xi plus 8j and b equal to 2i minus j are perpendicular. Find the value of x. We have two vectors and the two vectors are perpendicular. Which means that their dot product should be zero. So that's exactly what we will be using that's the, the idea we'll be using there. So a vector a dot vector b is equal to zero since they are perpendicular vectors, which means that vector a, which is xi plus hj, all of it, we dot it with 2i minus j, it should give us zero. So let's do our dot product. x times 2 is 2x. 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. Should be equal to 0. This is a simple linear equation which we can solve for x. So 2x is equal to 8 and x is equal to 4 when we divide both sides by 2. Yeah, so x is equal to is equal to 4. Yeah. So now, uh, this is an assignment that it will permit you to reinforce that which you have already learned. So, the, in the first question, we are expected to find the angle between the vectors u and v, where u is equal to 3i plus 4j and v is equal to negative or 6i plus 8j. So there you will 
observe from the lesson that we've established a formula that you can use to calculate the angle between the two vectors. In the second question, which of the following vectors is perpendicular to 3i minus 2j? We are given four vectors. And the idea, one of the properties of dot product is that perpendicular vectors have a dot product of, of zero. So you will surely be using that idea to figure out which of the vectors is perpendicular to 3i minus 2j. Then the next question is that given that theta is the angle the vector 2i minus j makes with the positive x axis, find the value of tan theta. Now, I would like that I will give us a tip or a hint that you should draw that vector, make a geometrical representation of that vector that is given, and then figure out where the angle that vector makes with the x-axis is found, and then you will be able to calculate tan theta from there very easily. But when we meet, I will show you another way of looking at it that you can also solve. We've come to the end of our lesson, and in the next lesson, we'll, we'll start looking at vector geometry. <laughs> Una tege ma jang ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njo biayen Ngani bana ma tege mot Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Esa kina bia jinki do Mane tambia ninya ne njo biayen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike Tam tam tama mote tam zabike Mane tambia ninya ne njo biayen